Temptation, can I address the questions to you? Um, <laughs> what is the main objective of this fund? I've heard so many things from so many people that has changed so many times. So once and for all, and ba yung gusto nating objective dito? We generate earnings via the investment fund in order to do what? Please. First of all, sir, um, of course, we, ha we want to do a lot of things the national government. But right now, we are constrained because we have very limited resources. But we're saying also, now we can tap naman from other sources. So like uh, in the case of Land Bank and TBP, right now they have these investable funds that we call. And that's about 1.3 trillion in the case of Land Bank. Um, Ma'am Cecil, please correct me. Uh, that's correct, uh, Treasurer Leia. Yes, ma'am. I, I know that. So, uh, in the case of uh, DBP, they have about 800 billion na investable fund. Mm. So we're just carving a very small portion of that. In the case of Land Bank, po, it's, uh, less than 4%. Forgive me, ma'am. You're not answering my question. Sir, uh, what, uh, do we, what, what is your objective? What do you want to accomplish when we invest these funds? So, um, we'd like to do more of the infrastructure projects. Of course, we have our PPP. We have also our national government projects. Ma'am, ma to cut you short, uh, the bill of Senator Villar says, accept infrastructure project. Nakalagay dito. <laughs> Section 30. Yes, yung sa profits. Yung sa profits. I'm not talking about the investments yet. Ah. Yung kikitain natin dito, saan yung gagamitin? Yung kikitain, una po, yung, yung una pong pondo, pwede pong gamitin for more infrastructure projects at hindi lang po infrastructure projects. But no, po, yung pondo. Opo. Yung kita. Yung kita na yung po, dapat... Ilinisin muna natin to be able to provide for the contributions ng Land Bank at DPP. As Although well, wala pa nga yun sa bill, gagawin pa lang natin. So, medyo tatang para makabal, may balik po sa kanila. Mm -hmm. Ngayon po may sobra and then of course, yung pong sobra, 25% of that na nag sa national government contributions, ilalagay po natin for the social services, uh, mga healthcare projects. And, and this could also be additional, no? Para at the same time, mas makakaluwag po sa budget, uh, sa fiscal space po natin ng national government. Ma'am, social welfare projects, it says in our in section 35, excluding infrastructure projects. Hindi po. So yung kita, hindi gagastusin sa infrastructure. Puro social welfare, lahat ng kita. 25% sir na kinakarve out. Mm -hmm. Yung po ilalagay sa social projects, ha? so mga social amelioration projects natin. Yung balance eh. Yung balance. Na 75%. Ng, ng MIC, pwede pong i -re retain earnings na po yun, di ba, ng, ng MIC. Hindi ko alam. Oh, hindi nakalagay dito. But can retain earnings. Sir, so, ordinary ano po, business operations that will form part of the retained earnings. So, pwede po yung paikutin para then it can ag again be leverage para magkaroon po ng mga po investments, ng joint ventures. Ma'am, nakalagay po sa section 35, doon pa lang muna tayo. 25% of the net profits shall be for poverty alleviation projects provided the remainder of the net profits shall be remitted to the national government earmarked for social welfare programs excluding infrastructure projects. So, that seems to counter what you're saying, that 25% of net profits will be for social amelioration projects and the remaining 75 is retained. Ang sinasabi po dito, the remaining of the net profits shall be remitted to the national government. Walang sinasabing retained earnings po sa Section 35. Uh. Siguro, sir, baka that is something that we need to clarify in the bill. Kasi po, uh, definitely, sir, yung hindi naman po pwedeng lahat, hindi po contributions ng national Agree. government po yun, mapupunta pa sa national government. Agree. So, I'm sure na meron pong other uh, po investors that they would also want to get their money back. Forgive me, ma'am. I'm basing my questions on the bill itself and not on what is not written on the bill. Uh, if, it, if you seek to add to it later on, then perhaps... Yes, sir. Um, the economic team can suggest the corresponding changes to address these um, these um, concerns. Now, on the actual fund, net profits tayo kanina eh. Saan natin i-invest? 
Securities? Pwede po. Yeah, meron pong uh, listing dito, yung allowable investments. Nakita ko nga. Apo. Um, securities, bonds, di ba? Apo. And infrastructure projects. Now, also. we're headed into a recession. Worldwide, globally. Are you considering that point? Are we headed towards a recession globally? In, well, meron pong uh, analyst saying na the, there would be recession in some of the advanced countries. But in the case of the Philippines, our view is that we'll not be in that position. Yes, ma'am. But globally, nga, it, po, we will yes. be affected by the recession that's looming and coming. Now, that's not necessarily bad because in a recession, ika nga, kung may bloodbath sa stocks, now is the time to buy. Why not? Now is a good time to invest. But my question, ma'am, is when will we reap the benefits? Usually, if stocks are low, then it takes about in a recession, global recession, it will take about two to three years to recover. So, kikita tayo in two to three years kung mag invest tayo sa stocks. Now, when you, when you talk of bonds, when you talk of um, debt instruments, again, if we discuss it later on, DBP and um, Land Bank would want their respective ROI. Um... I think it's DBP that owns the ERPs to MRT, right? Both? And you're earning how much? 18? 12% this time. Overall. So, if it's at 12%, and I presume, magkano yung portfolio nyo, magkano yung ROI nyo sa portfolio nyo for the past year? Ballpark? Uh, our portfolio, investment portfolio, uh, Senator... Scudero is 1.3 trillion and our average uh, return on that investment in 2022 was 3.73%. 3.76. And the part of elite naman, 3.76? Sir. 73. Ilan? 3.76. On the part of DBP? Uh, Your Honor, on the part of DBP, it's close to 7%. 7% return on equity, sir. Yes. My question, ma'am, is if you ask, ask now DBP, at the very least, that will be their basis. So isn't that like borrowing from them to the tune of the guaranteed supposed rate of return on their investment in other investments? So whether it's at 3.7 or 7%, um, to be, so as not to be unfair to them, diba? We should guarantee at the very least roughly those amounts. Kahit habaan pa natin yung period for the last five years, last three years, and let's average it off. At the very least, can that be placed in the bill? To sir, be fair to them. Yeah. Actually, sir, um, if they invest it in the GS right now at five years tenor, it's about uh, almost 6%. So, yun pa lang po. higher. Panalo na sila. Ngayon. Sa pagcore, wala naman silang ini-investan, di ba? Puro out yun eh. Yan, pwede kang maglaro siguro ng ROI nila. But in so far as Land Bank and DBP is concerned, we have to give them um, a respectable rate of return guaranteed based on the... Pwede nga sabi mo ha, pwede sa GS, um, 6% at the very least. Would that be fair? Yes. Yes po, dahil GS lang very conservative. Yes, exactly. Next question, ma'am. Um, Mr. Shai, I'll just have three points. We, we will have several hearings anyway. Next question, ma'am. I discussed this earlier. Paano yung composition ng board? Bakit isa lang ang representative ng land bank? Kung target natin is 100 billion, ano ba yung capitalization na tinitingnan nyo ng Maharlika Investment Fund? How much is the capitalization? Sir, for the seed, so meron pong 75 billion from uh, DBP and land bank. Tapos po, uh, right now, if we will just base it on dun sa BSP, the first two years nila, and base if it's the dividend last year of about 17 billion. Tapos po, meron pong pagkor na yung, again, if we base it on the dividend, so more or less mga 100 billion po, 100 billion pesos. Ma'am, I agree with the more or less 100, but we are organizing this corporation by virtue of a law, not under the corporation code. Right, ma'am? Tama po. Hindi ba dapat may capitalization yung batas? This does not have any. It simply talks of the contribution of land bank, of DBP, 10% ng pagkor, baka may mag-invest ng private sector. I mean, that it's a law, it's not an excuse not to have a capitalization, authorized capitalization requirement. 
the the bill does not both versions both the house and the senate so what would be para kung magi-increase tayo ng capitalization di ba hindi yung decision lang ng board hindi naman IRR lang like with any other corporation they should go through the process since this is mandated by law i-amend yung batas just like the BSP charter di ba no nag-increase tayo ng capitalization niyo we had to amend the law the same is true here kindly provide for a specific authorized capital of the MIF and going to the composition kung 100 billion yung nalagay nyo ma'am can bank 50 billion again um, attorney Mortel I think will agree with me that if the capital contribution of land bank is 50% prudence and practice to protect their investment would dictate that 50% of the members of the board should come ganun naman yung corporation di ba 50% ng capital galing sa akin, edi 50% ng board akin. Section 9. 25% ng capital galing sa DBP, 25% galing sa kanila. Um, where did this formula come from? Um, now if you want proper corporate governance, hindi ba tama lang na land banks should have the proportional representation in the board to their investment so that they can protect their investment? Same is true for DBP, same is true for PAGCOR, same is true for private individuals. In fact, you allocated already representation for pri future private investors na wala pa naman silang binibigay na pera. Why will they have one vote similar to Land Bank who contributed 50 billion? Isn't that to say the least unfair? Isn't that going against basic corporate governance and practice? Ma'am, please. Sir, sa Section 19 po, nakalagay... Um, so we have yung 15 member board, um, yung Secretary of Finance, uh -huh. tapos po yung CEO na MIC, yung, yung President, uh, tapos yung Land Bank and DBP. Uh -huh. And there would be six regular members representing the contributors to the fund, which are really uh, Land Bank and DBP, in accordance with the proportion of their corresponding investments. So, so si baka... Um, Ma'am, sa six lang nag apply yung proportional contribution nila, hindi sa 15? Ganun ba yan? Unang beses kaya tayo makarating ng korporasyon na ganyan, na meron kang cap kung ano mag, saan mag apply lang investment. Now, let's, let's, let's take your word for it, for example. Kung 50% ang land bank, 20 25% ang DBP, to understand Saan ang galing yung hindi natin sinunod sa isang korporasyon, yung capital contribution, ng investors? And since we do not know yet how much the 10% of PAGCOR will be, um, bibigyan mo pa sila ng share dun sa 6. And then the private sector are given 5. You don't even know. I mean, sige may independent director, but may akadim. Nagbigay ba si akadim? Si private sector na pipiliin niya kung sino man negosyante siya, nagbigay ba siya? Did he invest? There must be some rhyme and reason behind it why we're choosing the people to sit there. The Secretary of Finance sits as, um, as um, the chairperson. Um, may contribution bank national government? Or counted na contribution ng land bank that he chairs as... Um, I mean, no, I don't know. Ha. Is that how you look at it? I don't know. percent own po ng DBP ng national government ang DBP at ang land bank. So I count ko siya. So you have 8 out of 15 coming from land bank DBP kumini bilang ko secretary of finance it's still not 75 percent. My question is shouldn't it reflect the capital contribution? Mr. Mortel, sir? Um, good morning, Your Honors. I will uh, venture to uh, provide my insights on this. I think it, uh, the uh, issue um, is cropping up because of the uh, treatment of the kind of entity created. Uh, here it would appear, because it is an MIC, it would appear that it is a corporation. And that having so, the uh, question of Senator Scudero perhaps is on the reflection if it is treated as a stock corporation. But if the uh, entity is treated as a um, 
government entities with corporate body, then their submission could perhaps be accommodated. But not if the creation is entirely on the treatment of the same being a corporation. Uh, that's my submission, Your Honor. My presumption, sir, is that's why we're exempting them in the salary standardization law, the GCG law. We're exempting them from everything. Payment of taxes, procurement law. The intention is for this company to operate as a private entity. That the principles of business um, would apply to this corporation. And should therefore reflect to the corresponding interest and um, stakeholding of the contributors to the fund. Otherwise, it will be just, just like DSP. Created by law. Kami nagpangalo ng lahat. National government nagko-contribute. Okay lang. So, may I ask, um, Ma'am Lea, so, is, Ms. is Attorney Mortel correct? Ang tingin nyo rito, hindi ordinaryong korporasyon. We will not treat it as a corporation. And yet, you said in the proposed bill, you will treat this as an ordinary corporation wherein the rules of corporate governance would apply. Ma'am? Um, given that the contributions are coming also from the, land, the state-owned enterprises and eventually there would also be uh, contributions from the national government um, as we have cited from the, uh, from the proceeds of privatization, from some of the uh, proceeds of um, the, the fiscal regime of the mining sector. So eventually, tama po, magiging GOCC po siya. But we are asking for the exemptions from the GCG, from the Salary Standardization, from the Government Procurement Act. So it would be running on a commercial uh, basis. So hybrid siya, ma'am? Ma'am, forgive me, ma'am. Ganon din po kasi yung formulation sa corporations like Temasek, uh, even like te uh, sa Indonesia. So ganon din po yung structure niya. Um, yes ma'am, but um, there are distinctions between Temasek and Inga um, in relation to what we are proposing here. So just to clarify, um, so you're seeking to create a hybrid corporation that has all the benefits of a government entity, exemptions of salary standardization, exemptions of procurement law, exemptions of payment of taxes, both national and local, which will wreak havoc, by the way, because when they invest in stocks and buy and sell stocks, ang hirap itrack nun, ha? But anyway, we will go there at another time. But, um, and when you buy and sell properties too, government bonds, etc., etc. But anyway, my point is, getting all of those benefits and yet not being treated as a, as, a, as a business entity that can function as if it were a private um, a private venture. Um, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of Senator Escudero. Uh, is that, can, uh, is it with the, if it's okay with Senator, yes, let's well, proceed. Yes. Salamat, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Senator Escudero. Quick interjection lang po. Ah, nabanggit na naman yung INA. In the case of INA, ang board po nila limang individual lamang, tapos ang advisory board nila lima. And lastly po, in the, uh, sa questioning ni Sen Escudero, sinabi po ni Attorney Mortel ng GCG, baka ituturing ito or, or itinuturing itong maharlika na government entity with a corporate body. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, and with all due respect to the Chair, kaya nga po in plenary, although nag na dito ang ating ang, ang plenary, kaya po ni raise ni Minority Leader yung matter of the referral of the bill. Kaya po pinose niya at that point in time na baka sa Government Corporations Committee. Kasi po kung hindi malinaw din Mr. Chair, ang executive, kung, kung anong, uh, politi kung anong uh, animal itong mahali ka, makakalito, pati sa atin dito sa Senado. So just for the record, Mr. Chair, and then again with all due respect. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Sen. Escudero. Thank you. Please proceed, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, give me a couple of minutes, Mr. Chairman. Now, let's talk about the exemption sa GCG. May I ask why? Essentially, the GCG reviews whoever you will appoint in the board. Yes, sir. Now you created an advisory body to make the corresponding recommendations sans the GCG. May I ask why? How will the operation of MIF be hindered 
if the appointments to the board go through GCG. The usual course, if it is indeed a GUCC. Um, anong problema ba ng GCG na ayon yung padaanin sa kanila? What will uh, be hindered if it goes through GCG? I understand, DBP, dumadaan sa GCG, di ba? Land Bank, same. So, ano yung hindi nyo magagawa o makukuha kung dumaan sa GCG kaya ayaw nyo? What's the logic behind it, ma'am? Um, siguro po, um, given yung experience ng mga government corporations namin in terms of uh, yung pagpapadaan sa GCG, dahil sa dami rin po ng ine-evaluate nila yung due diligence po nila, so medyo nagkakaroon lang po ng um, time-consuming. But uh, if it would just be through the advisory body na, na ang composition naman po ang ating Department of Budget and Management Secretary, ang NEDA uh, Secretary, so there also would be in a best position to be able to ano po, uh, have a determination of who should sit dun po sa, sa board. Ma'am, if it's only time that you're concerned about, I would presume that the GCG is... um is um, really busy at the beginning of any administration. It's been six months. Halos na fill up na halos lahat ng government corporations. Kung may backlog man sila, tapos na yun. Um, so it's only time? So we are not, we, we, we include as part of the bill, we prioritize nila to. I mean, if it's only the delay that you're afraid, I'm telling you already, the bill will be delayed because there are so many gaps and loopholes in the bill. So the GCG will have time. You can already start processing some of the names as soon as it is approved. What else, ma'am? Because I wonder why you don't want the GCG to go through the nominees. I presume all of these will be via a letter of intent signed by the president that will go through the advisory board. The advisory board cannot just take up applications from whoever, diba? as it is with the GCG. May letter of intent, ang Secretary of Finance, ang Presidente, depende sa corporation, which the GCG will process, and if they approve it, then the appointment or the designation will be affected. So why else, ma'am, aside from the time constraint, bakit nyo ayaw duman sa GCG? Anong ayaw nyo sa GCG kung, ayaw, kung bakit nyo ayaw padanin? Aside from the time. Um, hindi lang, um, if I may, um, Your Honor, hindi lang po kasi naman uh, in terms of the nominations to the board ang ginagawa ng GCG. Marami rin po silang ginagawa evaluating po yung performance scorecard and the like. No? So maraming preoccupation na might also uh, delay in terms of the nominations to the board for the Maharlika Fund. And uh, we see naman po with this uh, the uh, advisory committee na they would be in a best position to be able to know who should be the, the best minds to be able to uh, make the MIC function very well. So yun po yung the rationale behind bakit hindi na lang po dadaan sa GCG. The main reason why GCG has a permanent term is for to guarantee independence. All of the people you're mentioning, DBM, DOF, and EDA, are all co-terminus with the president and serve at his pleasure. They're all coming from one side. In fact, the main reason why GCG is there is to provide a different and separate perspective. Dahil wala naman sigurong isang tao nagmamayari ng lahat ng talino, galing at magandang intensyon para sa bansa, di ba? Maganda rin mapakinggan yung iba. And the same is true here. If you really want this MIF to succeed, the more heads that are participating um, in crafting policies and being a part of it, I think it would be better and best than simply all coming from one and the same group, all obeying the command and will of the president because they're all coterminous with the president and serve at his pleasure, unlike the GCG. Um, moving to the next point, ma'am. Why exemption from the procurement law? Including purchase of ano bang papers yung sinasabi niyo exemption? Pati supplies niyo, exempted sa procurement law? Papel, stapler, ribbon, computer? Um, I think ang sinasabi po sa procurement law are technical services. Yung pong pag-e-evaluate 
um, like if they're going to get po yung uh, yung fund managers, so that would be exempted from the government procurement act. It did not specify here. It's it gave it simply gave a blanket exemption sa procurement law. Again, I'm talking about purchase of supplies, not only fund managers. I'm talking about purchase of vehicles. I'm talking about rental or purchase of a building or rental of a building or office space. I'm talking of almost everything and anything. Would you change it later on, ma'am, to specify? Uh, siguro po, uh, there would have to be uh, some clarity. Pero po sa section 32, nakalagay po doon yung engagement of professional or technical services needed in the selection of investments as authorized in this act, such as fund management, investment, etc. I agree, ma'am. Pero hindi nga yun specify kung anong kasama. Exempted lang. So yun lang ba ang intention nyo? So we will specify that. I yun understand lang. po, uh, maybe from the G... G Government Procurement Act, GPB. GPB. Yes, ma'am, GPBB. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning po, uh, Mr. Chair, as well as the honorable members of this committee. I'm Maria Ginesha Guillermo. Ma'am, sit there, ma'am. Thank you. Para hindi kayo naka... <laughs> Sorry. Yes, ma'am. So what's the intention here? San lang exempted ang MIF? Thank you very much, sir, for that question. Actually, it is not... Uh, the RA 9184 is still applicable as a general rule uh, for the any procurement activity of the MIC. We only have uh, provided an exemption, particularly in the engagement of, uh, re of um, uh, technical and um, research... Uh, services the reason why is because we wanted them to just give them the opportunity to really um, be able to uh, forge their agreement um, contractual arrangement with the service provider but however we have made a specific requirement wherein um, it should be that the board should come up with the approved um, guidelines in the selection process for this fund or research uh, technical services, sir. Ma'am, under pa rin ang COA to, di ba? Yes po. So, ano magiging basis ng COA to say, malito, hindi tama to? Of course, sir. Um, we would look into it as far as part of the requirement pa rin po when they would specify po yung specific na criteria when they would be engaging with the research or the technical um technical services provider po. Ma'am, in this changing world, there are already consultants that subscription na lang naman yun eh. Subscribe ka sa mga, di ba, sa report ng kung sino, Bloomberg, kung sino man, di ba? Okay lang naman yun eh. Hindi naman issue yun eh, di ba? Yes, sir. Now, other other procurement activities of the MIF, subject to um the procurement law? Yes, sir. So when they buy a piece of property? Then it is still procurement law, sir. As long as uh, we have qualified there, sir, that it is only exempt and insofar as the engagement of technical or research um, it's, uh, sir, research um, service providers. Po. I presume pag bilhin nila ng bonds, ng um, certificates of indebtedness, securities, wala lahat yun. Diba? Wala naman procurement law yun eh. There is still a procurement law, sir, because in general, we have... Paano, ma'am? Let's say, buwa ba isang share of stock? Gusto nilang bumili? Bukas? Paano procurement law yun? There's, um, as far as we are... What's concerned, the process, ma'am? Uh, as far as, uh, when it comes to all procurement transactions of the MIC, sir, it is still imp imperative that uh, RA 9184 would be applied. So what does RA 9184 say with respect to the purchase of shares of stock? Uh, ano yung process, ma'am? Of course, sir, as far as the sh um, shares of stock, of course, this is still subject to um, the corporation code, sir. And then, uh, as far as the procurement um, side of it, it is not um, under the purview po ng RA 9184. Oh, so, hindi nga kasama? Yes, sir. Hindi siya kasama? Pati pagbili ng government security, both no, foreign and local? Hindi kasama? Hindi po. 
pagbili ng real property kasama? Yes, sir. Do you make a distinction between an investment in a listed company and investment in a company that's not listed? May we just look into it as since we are referring to um, stocks, I think we have to apply uh, the corporation code pa rin po, sir. So it's not necessarily... No, ma'am. No, ma We're talking about procurement, procurement rules, procedures, and laws. Yes, pa. Is there a distinction between MIC, MIF, investing or buying shares of stock from a listed company compared to MIC, MIF, investing in a company that's not listed? There's no distinction, sir. Hmm? You sure, ma'am? Sir, this is in so far as the procurement law is concerned, sir. Ma'am, may kumpanya ako. Tinatakot ko sila. Hoy, bili kayo ng share. Mag-invest kayo sa kumpanya ko. Ni walang nakakaalam kung ano yung laman ng kumpanya ko. Hindi, unlike a company that's listed in the stock market, well, it goes through it several several checks. Yes, sir. So, walang distinction from the point of view of 9184? We are particularly looking at, um, sir, may I just be look, check my notes, sir. Is, as far as investments are concerned, sir, um, this is not within the purview po kasi ng RA-9184. Ma'am, you're and, with GPPB, di ba? Yes, sir. Submit to us, ma'am, the implications yes. na lang under yes, 9184 of the possible activities that MIC, MIF will be undertaking, assuming it is um, created into law. Yes, sir. Please, ma'am. Um... Last point, Mr. Chairman, um, for this so that others can be given a chance. Now, Malaya, I'd like to take up tax exemptions. Exempt from local and national taxes, direct, indirect, um, national internal revenue code, local government code, all funds, assets, and properties, all revenue, income, investment earnings, as well as accruals thereto, purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, or documents. Exempted that? Does Land Bank or DBP enjoy the same? Um, from Land Bank? No, sir. What kind of exemption do you enjoy from national and local taxes? Any? None, Your Honor. DBP? None, po, Your Honor. Um, is this the first of its kind, Mamlea? No, I, I don't know. I'm, perhaps Padgor is. Or Napocor used to be to a certain degree, but um Um The intention along sir. Because uh, the intention is that um given that uh for gun taxes to be paid, it will go back to the fund. So um, iikot po yung pondo ng pera, mas mapapalag o mas magagamit. So I think that was the intention behind I, I agree, ma'am, but um the previous you've been the National Treasurer for quite some time. You've seen the policy of um, previous Secretaries of Finance, regardless of administration. It's easier to have a uniform rule applicable to all than to create exemptions because it will wreak havoc on the system. You yourself said it will go to government anyway. Diba? Doc stamps, babayaran. Final tax sa sale ng, uh, on, on income, sale ng shares of stock. Gobyerno pa rin pupunta. Capital gains tax, documentary stamp tax, transfer tax, gobyerno naman lahat pupunta yan. So, why wreak havoc um, by exempting this entity? And again, I think this is the first time that, to my knowledge, ha, na merong entity ganito ka lawak yung exemption na binibigay natin when in fact it will just simply go from one pocket to another of government. So if you want to preserve the fund, then we can put here and then all taxes paid shall be reverted back to the company by way of additional investment of the national government. But let them pay the taxes in the ordinary course. Di ba ma'am? simple yan? Kindly consider it, ma'am. Because you will, you will have encountered several problems. Purchase of supplies, equipment, papers, documents. Biglang tax exempt, exempt sa duties, exempt lahat. Ma'am, magulo yun ha. Magulo siya. And it will be a gaping loophole in so far as entities selling to the MIF, MIC is concerned because they will claim it's, it's sold to them even if it is not and claim the exemption. Not MIC, MIF ha. The entity selling.
Kindly consider that too, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I will yield to our other colleagues. Um, given that I'm sure they have other questions as well, um, I will await the reply and the feedback and the submissions and position papers from the economic team headed by uh, Ma'am Leia and as well as from the GPPB um, for me to continue with my um, interjections and interpolations on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for that very... Uh...